All right, perfect. And we're, we're recording it too. And I'm doing it on my phone just in case for whatever reason the Zoom doesn't work too. So we should be good. Until the calls come in and you know how that goes. All right. Okay, well, let's jump into it. So thanks for making it. And we're gonna jump into the listing presentation. And I guess before we get started, um, what would you say just in terms of experience with listing presentations, um, how should it, I mean, how should it go? Like what's, how do you know if it's a good presentation or not? They sign. That's, that's a great answer, right? Mm -hmm. They actually signed the listing agreement. That's a good, good tell that things went pretty well. Is there anything that happens in that conversation that you know you did, like you knocked it out of the park and it was about as good as you can go? They don't ask about commission. Don't ask about commission? That's a great answer. That's true. That's the best objection handler is if you have a strong presentation, they don't even question your commission. Okay, but let's talk about that. So sellers typically want to know what? They want to know commission was just brought up. What else do they want to know? What you're going to do to sell their house. What you're going to do to sell their house, right? Mm -hmm. That's called your plan of action. And we're going to get into that. So what you do to sell, what you do, I can't spell right now, do to sell. Okay, your commission, what do you charge commission? And that doesn't always come up, but a lot of times that's what they're thinking is how much do you charge, right? What else do they want to know? How long, maybe? How long it'll take. How long? Yep. Price. Price, thank you. So it's price, right? Price and how long? These are the two big ones are commission and price, okay? Uh, in the presentation, those sellers do want to know what do you do to actually sell my home? What makes you different than anybody else, right? as well as how long is it going to take. And we're going to talk about future pacing, and that was uh, Sam Bell's topic earlier in the week, that strong professionals are good at future pacing. Future pacing is setting proper expectations, okay? So as we talk about future pacing and setting expectations, the market is completely different than what it was three months ago, right? A completely different market. So we want to be able to talk about the market, where it is, where it was, and where it's heading. And that's another piece and another portion of this here. So there's two main things that we do. And normally, so we talked about the price and paperwork is commission, okay? So MPP, market, price, and paperwork. We don't wanna do those until we've, gotten, we've created the value for them to choose us. So a lot of times, somebody will call us up and say, hey, what price do you think I can get for my home? Or what do you charge commission before I have you come out here? Because for me, it's all about commission. Yeah, have you heard that before? So how do we handle that? Do we tell them our commission on the phone? We don't, right? That's an objection handler. So typically what you wanna say in a situation like that is, I understand that you're, or what I'm hearing is that you wanna net the most from the sale of your home. Is that correct? So now you're shifting from expense to benefit, okay? That's the best way to handle that objection is, what I hear you saying is you wanna walk away with the most amount of money from your home, is that correct? That's great, well commissions are negotiable. And I can promise you commissions aren't gonna come between us working together. So what works better, let's get together Friday at four o'clock and I need to see your home, see what it is we're working with here and ask you some questions and then from there, I'm gonna show you what I do to get home sold. And I promise you, again, commissions aren't gonna come between us, okay? Is that, is that fair enough? Yeah, that's great. Sometimes they'll really press you and still try to get it, but an objection handler, as we talked about just earlier in the morning ascent message, is an objection is an unanswered question. So the more you practice that question specifically, what do you charge commission, the better you're gonna be at answering. You have to let, you can't just dodge it. You can't just avoid it altogether. You gotta acknowledge, we say repeat and affirm. Right? So you repeat it, but you can change the words of it. You can say, what I hear you saying is you wanna walk away with the most amount of money. Well, I'm gonna show you that you're gonna walk away with more money working with us, with our proven systems of how we get home sold versus working with anybody else out there. Does that sound great? Awesome. So you're just trying to get them to sit down with you, meet them face to face, and still do some more discovery. So that's why you don't want to talk about price or commission up front because they're, 
they think that all agents are the same. And whoever tells them the best price and whoever tells them the best commission is who they're going to choose. Well, could somebody make a mistake by going that route and just focusing on a price that an agent tells them or a very low commission that an agent tells them? Could that be to their detriment? Mm -hmm. And you can say that. For sure. You can say, can I share with you why that concerns me? Well, it concerns me because not every agent is the same, right? And we're not trying to badmouth other agents, but what we have to do in phase one, so this is phase one and phase two, okay? In phase one, we have to get them to choose me. So this is separating yourself from the competition, but there's a way in doing it. And I know there's a few people on here that I've, I've done the presentation for in the past, and John does it very similarly. George also the same, this is who I learned it from, right? But typically, in the choose me side, we're asking questions and everything is discovery based, okay? So we talked about a little bit earlier with the 12 major skill sets that we master. One of them is setting appointments, the second is pre-qualifying. Well, pre-qualifying is discovery, okay? So what we're gonna do when we start, does anybody know what we start with in our presentation? Leanna? I'm gonna pick on you. What is it? Tap, 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 tap right? Okay, what's tap? What is knowledge and promise? There we go. Nice job. Can you give me a quick example of what that sounds like, Leanna? Thank you for meeting with me. Um, I know you took time out of your day um, to to let me at your house. I promise this is going to be valuable, and after we meet, uh, you're gonna know what to expect. And process your home. Good. That was good. You can hit it just like that. So we always, with any presentation, you always want to start from a place of gratitude. Keep the focus on them. So you want to thank them. Thank you for taking the time to be here, right? You want to acknowledge, even if the house is horrendous, if it's a beautiful home, you have a beautiful home, right? But even if they don't, you can still thank them for their time. Thank you for taking the time out of your day today, as Leanna said. And then you want to promise. The promise is really critical. This is big in setting appointments as well. Your promise is your conviction. There's two fundamental beliefs you have to have before you walk into every presentation. What are those two beliefs? What's your mindset gotta be when you walk into that listing presentation? I'm the best person for the job. I'm the best person for the job, so you're the best, right? And what's the second? I can get your home sold. Get it done, right? So you can do the job. So you're the best for the job, you're not the second best, Best for the job, and you can do the job, okay? Right now, there's a lot of hesitation for agents taking listings right now because they're afraid that it's gonna sit on the market, especially if the seller's unrealistic with their expectations, right? We don't ask them the questions to discover truly how motivated they are. We may have a listing that just sits. So there's a little hesitation for agents right now to take listings. Um, which is all, it's, it's good, which actually creates better opportunity for us that are aggressive at taking listings, but you have to know that you can do the job, that you can get them the results that they're looking for, okay? You have to have that belief, as well as that you're the best person for the job. So when you make that promise, that demonstrates your confidence. And you say something to the effect of, you know, thank you, Laura, for taking the time to be here today. You got a beautiful home. And I know on the phone you were mentioning that you have to be in San Diego by July. Well, I promise you that after today, you're gonna to have a good understanding of what it takes to get into your new home by July. Does that sound good? Great, awesome. So then we're gonna go from there, okay? And even when I asked at the end, does that sound good? That's a tie down question, okay? So it's learning how to, just remember the same, telling is repelling. Asking questions is self-discovery. That gets them to speak, but you're in control when you ask the questions. Okay, so tap, we got thank, acknowledge, and promise. Then what's next? What's after tap? Matt, your game plan. Matt, game plan. We got to cast a vision, right? Every great leader knows how to cast a vision. So you got your blueprint. So what are the four things are on that overview? Does anybody remember of what we're going to cover today on the presentation? Your needs, wants, and expectations. Yep. What I do to get a home sold, the marketing, and what makes me different. Okay, what I do. Where the market is, where it was, and where it's going. Okay. And the close. Close. Awesome job. 
And just for those of you who don't know Leanna, Leanna, how long have you been in the business now? Um, pretty much the beginning of April. About 90 days? Yeah. About three months, right? Three months. Yep. And just took your first listing a couple weeks ago, and hopefully we get that thing sold. So needs, wants, and expectations. Okay? All right. She said, what I do to get home sold? That's your plan of action. Okay, so we want to have a very clear and defined plan of action. What do we do every time we list a home? And we can get into some detail on that. On the market, where the market was, where it's at currently, and where it's heading. This, to me, is the very big separator when I come into a listing presentation is how in-depth I get on the market. Okay, And then I personally use the Flex Market Summary Report. We can talk a little bit more about that coming up too. Okay, and then talk about the cycles, and then close is paperwork. So we don't tell them close specifically, but if I'm going to do an overview, so after I did my thank, acknowledge, and promise, I'm going to start off and say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. First, we're going to start off by asking some questions and finding out a little bit more about what it is that you want, understanding your needs, understanding expectations. What are your expectations in the agent that you look to hire? Right. I'm also going to share what my expectations are of my clients and what, how we have to work together to get your home sold. Okay. Secondly, we're going to talk about what I do to sell homes. We're going to talk about my plan of action and we're going to lay it out in terms of when we list your home, pre-marketing things we do before we actually list your home. And then what we do as soon as your home is listed, what that sounds like to get to a successful escrow. Okay. Third, we're going to talk about the market, where the market's been, where it's at and where it's heading. And finally, right, if you feel confident and comfortable that we can work together in terms of getting the most money for the sale of your home, then we're gonna take care of some paperwork. Does that sound good? Or are we on the right track? These are certain questions I'm gonna ask and depending on their personality style. So there's four different personality styles. You have amiables, you have analyticals, you got drivers, and you got expressives. And we'll do another training on that as well. And when you understand what type of personality style you're working with, you want to be the leader that they're looking for. A lot of times we believe in the golden rule that we treat others how we want to be treated, right? That's how we're brought up. That's the golden rule. The platinum rule is treating others how they want to be treated. So you have to identify what their personality style is because if you treat everybody how you want to be treated, you're only going to be right about 25% of the time. You're missing out three quarters of the time. 75% of the time, you're not connecting with people. So if you want more connections, then you have to understand who they are and be the leader they're looking for, okay? All right, so again, those are the four things in the overview, okay? So now as we go through, and if you look through, if you have your script book with you and you go through it, you're gonna see we started with the tab, then we went through, so that's the tab. Thank, thanks again, I'm reading it upside down here. I'm gonna see if I have one in front of me. So we got 38 here, okay? If you, just so you also see this on here, I wanna make sure that you're aware of it. You also have right after it on page 42, 21 questions for the listing presentation. Your top three, you want memorized. Right off the top of your head, you wanna be able to say what your top three questions are in every single listing presentation, okay? After that, we have the master close. We have powerful closes for the listing presentation as well that we practice. Okay, then you see pricing strategy. Pricing strategy can also be talked about as you're moving over to the price, we want them to choose us again. If you remember, I said choose me in phase one before we start talking about price. We want them to feel comfortable with us ahead of time or at least ask them the question, you know, how do you feel with what we've shared so far? Now the biggest secret or the biggest part of this presentation of why it feels so good it's the discovery. It's the needs, wants, and expectations. That's your 21 questions, okay? And then we'll get into the pricing strategy. So the 21 questions, I can just go through it just so that you know we, we hear some of it. Do either of you want to role play with me? Sure. You got, it? you got it? Okay. All right. So share with me, Laura. What is most important to you about selling this property? That I get the most for other houses. 
I really need to be out of here. Okay. And I really need to get the most to net to buy something where I'm going. Okay, great. So you need to walk away with as much money as possible and in the fastest time possible. Why is it important that it's fast? I have to be at my job, you know, September 1st. Okay, so you need to be at your job September 1st. And where is your job located? San Diego. Oh, in San Diego. That's awesome. That's exciting. So is it a uh, promotion? Is it a parallel move? It's to... a parallel move. Okay, parallel. Okay. You have family there, that's great. And um, that's that, I love San Diego. San Diego is fantastic. Is there anything else or any other reason why you need to make sure that you net the most for the sale of your home other than what you're purchasing there? Is there anything else that you need to pay off or take care of before we move over there? No. You're good. No. It's, mm -hmm. So it's just strictly for money down for your next purchase. Exactly. That's great. Well, the good news is that you're starting this right now because the market is starting to shift. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more as, as we get going. But uh, tell me, what, you, you mentioned we're going to be going to San Diego. So the next question is, tell me where will you be moving to next? And what are you looking for in the next home? So then I would just start saying something to the effect of share with me a little bit. What does that perfect home in San Diego look like? It's just going to be a little bit smaller. A little just smaller? Myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little smaller. So it's just yourself. So you're downsizing as well. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. And can you tell me anything else of, about it other than it being a little bit smaller? And, and, and how much smaller is smaller for you? Roughly square footage. Do, well, do you know? I was thinking of just maybe purchasing a condo. I'm not in a hurry, but okay. I just need to get the most. I'm going to be able to stay with family. That's great. For a little bit if I don't find anything. Well, that's fantastic. So you actually have some time on your side, at least on the purchasing side. So that's smart. You're going to net as much as you can now, right? And then take your time on the purchase side to make sure you get the right home. Is that is that correct? Yeah. yeah. And and about how much time could you stay with family if you needed to? Um, I don't want to overstay my welcome, so right. you know I'm I'm starting to look now. Okay, so that's why it's so important that we get your house in escrow, and even it more is. than making you the most money for the sale of your home, making sure the terms fit so that it puts you in the strongest position to purchase. Correct. Uh, okay. Would you be interested in rent backs here, or do you want to just get over there yeah, as quickly no, as you can? Yeah, rent back. Can rent. you explain what a rent back is? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we'll we'll talk more about a rent back. Okay. Um, but again, I didn't. If if you notice, I'm not just taking your surface answer, your first answer that you're right. giving me. I'm digging deeper. Right. Tell me a little bit more about that. This isn't about rattling through all 21 questions. Right. This is about getting you to feel comfortable and open up. And I mean, has any of it felt like an interrogation? No. It's, it's felt pretty natural and comfortable mm -hmm. because every time I'm repeating and I'm affirming, right, this is about becoming a professional listener, about being a great interviewer, but not an interrogator. If you come off like an interrogator, the, the, like we talked about before, it's in that book, Versatile Selling, relationship tension is high. When we don't know each other yet, that wall is up. So I have to create rapport. I have to ask good questions. I have to show you that I'm listening. Yeah. That this isn't about me just trying to make a commission, right? With commission breath, right? This is about truly discovering what's important to you and taking the time to figure that out. That's, this is where the magic's at. It's all in discovery. And then being able to, from the information I'm getting, tailor my presentation as specifically as possible to what you're looking for. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so um, thank you for, for doing that. So as, as you can go through it, and I'll just jump through it. So share with me, what did you like most about your current property? Um, I liked the backyard. The backyard? Yeah. That's great. It's a beautiful backyard. And what, what else uh, did you like about it, or what was it that made you purchase this home? Uh, it was a single story. Single story was important to you? It was. Single story is great, yeah. and especially with a nice yard especially being here in Camarillo, where the average yard is less than 7,500 square feet. You have a beautiful, it looks like, yeah. is this about 9,000 square it's feet? It's about almost 10, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, somebody else is also gonna appreciate those features as well. That's great. Are there any improvements or updates you have completed or plan on doing? Um, I don't have money to do anything, so I was thinking of selling it as is. Okay. I did do some upgrades in the 80s, but it's not really, that's current now. Okay, that's great. So nothing else that you want to do before you put this house on the market then, that's correct? Just sell it I'm as an as is sale? Yeah, I'm hoping to sell it. That's like great. It is now. Well, we're going to talk about that, especially as we get into pricing, and we're going to talk about the different things that are going to drive the value, which is different than price. The value is the desirability of the home, okay? And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but that's great. 
uh, help me understand what ultimately made you decide to sell? And this is one of my top questions that I ask. There's usually three of them, this one being the first one. I want to find out what's happened in your life and you've already shared with me. You're yeah. moving to San Diego to be close to uh, family. family and then that uh, you have a job that you're starting September 1st, okay? So I want to know that because now I know you're motivated. Like you're definitely going to sell and move, yes. right? This isn't something that it can happen. And then so I can follow up with questions like, so if you weren't able to get the price that you're hoping for, right, uh, what would you do then? Or if you couldn't sell the home, what would you do then? And typically I'm gonna get a response, I have to sell this property. I have to sell it, there is no other option, we have to make it work, that's great. So we're gonna list it realistically at a price that's gonna cause it to sell, correct? Right, and I'm already trying to work on those expectations. And what I have found early on, uh, definitely early on in my career, that was probably the thing I was most nervous about, the two things, pricing and commissions. Those were the two things that I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go. We're gonna talk about commissions. We're gonna talk about our price. They're gonna be unrealistic with their price. I don't know how I'm gonna overcome that. So I wouldn't even wanna ask them the question, what are you thinking of listing your home at? I wouldn't wanna ask them because if they set the bar too high, now I gotta overcome that. Yeah. And I wasn't strong enough to know how to overcome that. And once I figured this out and started doing this, the pricing is never an issue anymore. Because by the time we get there, when we go through it in the right process and the right steps, and then we show them the comps, and I typically will take a one-line CMA report, and you wanna focus on, and we'll just start talking about it right now, three solds, always have the highest sale. You have to know, especially if it's a model match, you have to know the highest sale in that neighborhood, okay? So I'll have three solds, three pendings, active or under contract, and depending on the market, some markets I won't even show active. Does anybody know why I won't show active on, on in some markets? Because they're not, they haven't sold, so they're not realistic numbers. They haven't sold, they could be overpriced, yeah. right? Something it could start in, exactly, and it hasn't sold yet. Now, if I wanna use it as an example, to show them this home's yeah. been on the market yeah. for 60 or 90 days, that's another story. Yeah. And what I do, what I will do when I'm doing my research depending on what I think is gonna be the biggest hurdle based on my prequal script, right, which is another script we have in here, in discovery before I set my appointment up, is going to be, if, if I can tell they're gonna be overpriced, then I'm really gonna tailor the presentation on pricing, okay? But I can't just hit it right out the gate. We gotta create some value, we gotta be connected. There's gotta be some trust before we move to that. And that's, again, choosing me before we get there, okay? So after I go through this, and we go through the discovery portion through the questions, and then we talk about our plan of action, what do we do to actually get home sold, right? And then we start talking about the market. The market, you see M up here. So I've heard it argued that market shouldn't be talked about until they've already chosen you. But for me, what I have found is that's how I'm gonna create the most value, is talking about the market. Again, where it was, where it's at, and where it's heading. This is very critical, especially with being able to explain why homes were priced at what they were before and going for what they were three months ago versus what they're going for right now. This market portion, we have to become industry and local experts, okay? We gotta know how to use the numbers to tell the story, especially if you have an analytical on the other side. But I would even argue and say, even if I don't have an analytical, I'm coming prepared with these numbers, and with this information. It's huge, yeah. it's big, and it truly, and I've heard it so many times, one, that I was the most prepared and I was the most thorough, okay? And they chose me because of that. The other thing I've heard is you can't get these numbers, so when people want to do, yeah. sell it on their own, and they try to look at Zillow, and they try to look at all these other things to try to get the information they think that we have access to, this is really the differentiator that shows them that, oh, we don't have access to this information. When you start talking about absorption rates, does anybody know what an absorption rate is that's on yes. here? Yes. Do you know? It's the time frame that we have, or the properties we have on market uh -huh. and how quickly they're gonna sell that's right. compared to the previous month. That's right. Yeah. So it's an indicator. Absorption rate is, it's a quick indicator of what the inventory level's like. Okay, so when we see 1.3 as the absorption rate, what does that mean? That means that one, 
One point three. So Sorry. that's okay. Doesn't it mean that if um, if no homes were to come on the market, it would take one point three months to get everything currently on the market sold? That's right. And then, so what kind of market is that? At uh, one point three months inventory. Sellers. Sellers. Sellers market. What's a neutral market? Six months inventory. That's correct. So six months. If you saw the absorption rate at six months inventory, that's a true neutral market. Okay. Anything less than six months is actually a seller's market. But what we show them when we talk about where the market was to where it's heading is when you see an increase, and you'll see it on that flex market summary report, it'll pull up all last month's stats for Camarillo or 93010 or 93012. And it'll show in, what are we in now? We're in August, right? So today, there's a Yeah, time. so August. So yeah, so August 1st, now we have as of July. So if you pull up July's numbers, you're gonna see that absorption rate starting to increase. And now, so earlier in the year, it was at about a 0.6 months inventory, which is insane. That's crazy. Never seen it that low. That's less than, it's almost a half month of inventory. That's why we were seeing homes go 100, 150,000 over asking price, okay? Now, we're seeing it between like 1.2 to about 1.8. So it's more than doubled. So you'll see that percentage increase and you show them and then you also show them the average days on market. And you show what the average days on market used to be versus what it is. The other key indicator that you wanna write down is list price versus sold, sold. price, okay? Because it was hitting about 104, 105%. Now you're seeing right around 101%. So again, these are all numbers and indicators that show that there's a shift in the market that's happening. And more than anything, I wouldn't say prices are dropping. Now you're just getting more towards the market value because yeah. it was selling way over market value before. But um, sellers are still th expecting that they're going to get way more. Absolutely. I went to a listing presentation and he was like, I want 1.2. And I'm like, that's wonderful. <laughs> but I was like, okay, I'm going to get you 1.2, but you're going to have to paint the whole house. Right. I could, there's things you're going to have to do. Right. He was comparing it to this beautiful model. Needless to say, we didn't sign the listing because I, right. not that we, I couldn't overcome objections. I right. just felt like, I mean, there was a hot pink room. I'm like, this is right. not the same as the 1.2. Right. And I kept telling him, like, look at the pic. I'm gonna look at the picture. <laughs> right. But no, it's but you hit it on the but head. Their reasoning was like, well, I'm closer to the pool, and I'm, it's right across the street. I'm in a cul-de-sac, and I'm like. Okay, you've been talking to another agent, but right. that doesn't get you. No. I mean, they're gonna live here. I told right. Them. And that lot's way bigger. And anyways, it's just still working on it, but it's so funny to hear like sellers are just like, That's key. No, I want it. Well, and you hit on you hit on so many great points on that right now, just in terms of where the seller's expectations yeah. are. The other thing that I've seen in section my buddy Ken Gretsch, I, I want to give him credit where it's due is he will show property A, property B, right? and show the differences just like an appraisal and show the plus and the minus mm -hmm. and you got to be very careful when you do this because people take a lot of pride in their homes they all want to believe their homes the taj mm -hmm. mahal mm -hmm. right yeah. and that it's worth so much more than any other property that is sold so it's you got to be very delicate with yeah. how you go through that but you got to show them and speak to them in a way by doing enough discovery to see okay what's their personality style and if they're more on the amiable, on the feeling side, then you're gonna use words like, you know, so how does this feel? So based on what we've shared, so I'm gonna kind of jump ahead a little bit, right? We're going through the presentations. We know we're at a good spot. We know that it's clicking. We know that we're connecting. And I'll say something to the fact of, just like you're interviewing agents to find the right fit for you, I'm also interviewing you to see if we're a good fit together. Because if we can't meet each other's expectations, then I, you know, I wouldn't want this to happen, right? And typically, it's kind of like the takeaway close, where when I start saying, you know, I don't know if we're a good fit for each other, they start wanting me more. And it, 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 this actually happened with a buyer who was looking in River Park, and he was way unrealistic with his pricing. And he just kept saying, well, let's write 40, 40 under ask, right? And this was a different market, but still insane. And the home wasn't even on the market yet. I got an insight from a colleague mm -hmm. who was in the business, said, hey, come check my property out. It's coming up in River Park. I go show it before it even hits the market. He wants to write 40 under. So he does that twice. And after the second time, I said, but you're wasting everybody's time. Yeah. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, he's, and then he started blaming his wife. And I was just like, all right, man, you, regardless of who's making the decision, you got to understand 
that if you were selling your home, would you sell it to somebody off market for 40,000 under asking price? And you're not, you're not going to do that. Nobody right? The market exactly. So I just basically said, I said, you know what? I don't think we're going to be a good fit for each other. And he's like, oh, well, you know, the gal from the open house that we met before, she's calling me up. I said, that's great. You should work with her. Right. And it, I'm uh, straight up. That's what I told him. He's like, but we don't want to work with her. We want to work with you. I said, well, I'll work with you, but you got to follow my lead. And so I had this talk with, with another agent who I really respect. And I said, what do you do when you're dealing with a situation like this? And he said, is I have two come to Jesus talks with him. Okay. I have two reality talks where I bring them back to reality. Oh, I need to hear this. After the second <laughs> one, if they don't come to reality, I cut them loose. And I think that was the best advice he could have gave me. So again, you have that real talk and say, hey, look, this is what it's going to take to win. This is what it's going to take to be successful. Now, even with the listing presentation, how can you guarantee that you're going to sell the home? How do you know with 100% certainty that you can sell any property on the market? Does price anybody it. know the answer? What price was that? it right. Price it right. That's exactly right. Every home will sell at the right price. Right. Yeah. That's where the pricing strategy that we get into is so critical and so important because we have to get it to the sweet spot. So I don't get no longer stuck on a specific number that I'm going to wow them with that. Oh, I got the secret number, right? I don't come yeah. up with that. Yeah. I come up with, we got to find the sweet spot. When we find the sweet spot, then we're going to get the action that we know. Again, that's when we talk about value versus pricing. Yeah. Value is desirability. It's buzz. It's how much attraction we have. And how do we increase desirability for a property? How do we make a home more desirable? How do we know? What was that? I think price set less than the last sold right now. There you go. Because that's where it's going. Because then if you show them that market summary, mm -hmm. and, um, you'll see that it's starting to, like it hit a peak and it's starting to come down. So this, I just tell them like, if my job is to beat the market, right? Because the fastest and the highest. And if it's coming down, yep. this is where we need to be. I'm not going to make the price, the buyer right. is. Because I could put it on the market. We could get above, we could get a little below. Right. But you know, if you want to move it, this is where it needs to happen because at 1.01 percent. Yep. If you put it at one percent, if you're expecting one percent, you know, then we can just price it a little bit lower than the last sale because it is coming out. Right. So I don't know. Sometimes they're like, "Well, what the highest price?" I'm like, "They do." I do too. I'd love to be wrong. I do too. Right. I get more commission, but absolutely. So, but they typically want to start high mm -hmm. and work down, right? Yeah. And we have to share with them why that's a concern. Yeah. The only way we can guarantee that we can do the job and net them the most from the sale of the home is if they follow our lead. Yeah. And that's where we have to be stronger in terms of our leadership. And that's what all this is. This is all about leadership. Are they look, who's hiring who? They're hiring you yeah. to lead them through the process. You're not employed by them in the sense that they're your boss. They tell you what to do and you just listen to everything and you just do whatever they tell you and you walk on eggshells because you don't want to offend them. Right. Yeah. That's how many of us work in this business. That's how I've started in the business. Mm -hmm. Right. And it took a while before I realized that one, I didn't want to work with everybody. And two, that I was the leader. I was the one leading them through one of the most stressful things that they'll ever experience. Right. So what I drew here is where the market's heading. Right. And if you think of a rock or something with momentum, you got to get out in front of it in terms of pricing, not behind it. You get behind it, you're going to keep chasing it down. So we start here. Well, this is going to keep coming down and now we're chasing it further down. That's not what we want to do. We want to go the other way up, right? We're going to have to price it under market value to make sure that we get the right amount of demand and activity to, to make sure that we actually do our job and do what we're supposed to do. So the thing is, is and this is part of how we get sellers to accept that it's being able one of the things I learned in law school is being able to differentiate between two things. You have to, just like the A and the B, comparing the two properties, you have to be able to look at one property and say, okay, these are the benefits to this other property. These are the benefits to your home. These are some of the drawbacks. Yes, we only need one buyer, right? We only need one, but it does help if you got multiple buyers. And that's what we're trying to do. Even though it's less common right now, but there are two ways to increase that desirability. One is based on pricing, pricing it lower, okay? So you have two cars, both 
same exact features. So same upgrade, same everything. One's at 50,000, one's at 40,000. Which one are you gonna buy? The exact same car. You're gonna buy the one at $40,000, right? Now let's say they're both at 40,000, but one's got all the upgrades. It's got, I was gonna say DVD player, right? It's got blue, <laughs> it's got Blu-ray, it's got navigation. It has the premium wheels. It's got the luxury upgrades, everything in it, but they're both priced at 40,000. Which one do you get now? The one that's got all the upgrades, right? So those are the two ways to increase the desirability. You either have to add more features and based on the answers that I had from my seller earlier in the role play, was she willing to fix or do anything? So what's the only way that we can sell her home? Price we got to price it lower, right? And we got to be stronger in terms of getting them to price it lower. And we also share with them that you can't undersell a home because we know if we fully expose a home and we do what we're supposed to do on our end, right? Do we put crappy photos online? Heck no. Ever, never. 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 Why not? Because it's the first um, place people go to look at the house. A majority of buyers are going to find their home online through the photos. The photos are the most important thing. So we have to show it in the best light possible. 24 seven open houses online, right? Yeah. Based on those photos. So if the photos stink, we already know we're costing our seller a lot of potential money, right? So that's the first and foremost is we have to make sure that it looks well. Good. When we talk about expectations, again, this is through discovery. We want to ask questions like, so what are your expectations or what have you seen work in terms of what a seller does or a listing agent does to sell your home? What type of marketing are you looking for? So we're gonna have a marketing conversation, right? What type of communication do you prefer? Well, I work Monday through Friday at these times. I also want a future pace and say something to the effect of, well, every Monday between three and five, we're gonna have a, a, about a 30 minute conversation talking about the market. We're gonna talk about how many showings we've had, how many offers have come in, right? Or lack of. And we're also gonna talk about what else is sold that we're competing against. So every Monday at this time, we're gonna talk. Why is that important that I set that expectation? So in case you have to do a price reduction, they're aware of why? We're always working towards a price yeah. reduction. Every conversation's working towards and a price. If it hasn't sold, yeah. it's we're overpriced, right? Yeah. And that's the bottom line. If it's priced well, buyers and agents are gonna walk into the home and know yeah. this home is priced well. Buyers aren't suckers, right? Buyers, they have access to information and they, the Zestimate isn't always the most accurate, but they can tell what's selling in the neighborhood and when something's a very good opportunity or not, right? So we have to create that buzz and there's different ways of doing that. Uh, and that's where we talk about the plan of action, okay? Any questions before I jump into any more? I know I'm covering a lot. We got about eight or nine online, so I'm glad you guys hopped on. Any questions you guys have? Um, do you talk about anything like if you need to do it, like, let's just say somebody didn't say they wouldn't do improvements. Right. Do you talk about anything that you would like to see done to get it market ready? Yeah. Because a, a couple of listings I went on, I go with my, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a listing and I walk in and I'm like, this <laughs> I can't take pictures of this, you know what I mean? Right. Like, that, that's, do you set that expectation? Absolutely. Anywhere? Especially now. So yeah. the biggest thing for their job is to make the home available. It's making it show ready, show ready. right? It's gotta look good and they gotta make it available. Yeah. So in, in terms of setting proper expectations, these are the questions I'm gonna ask. So how do you prefer for showings? And sometimes they're gonna eliminate it as much as possible. And I'm gonna share with them why we need to have a different strategy or a different game plan in terms of how we're gonna approach it. And in terms of repairs and things that need to be yeah. done, that's always a, it's a tricky one, right? Because we know the longer we wait to fix a home up, that it could cost them tens of thousands of dollars. Right. I mean, some of it right now is almost a hundred thousand dollar difference, 150. Yeah. You know, we were talking about a property that's in Cameroon right now that the price is dropping to 775 in central Cameroon. Well, just three, four months ago, that same home was a minimum 850 to close to 900,000. Yeah. I can almost bet that was about three months ago. So if you take another three months to fix a pergola in the backyard or remove something, uh, that it could cost you yeah. a lot of opportunity. So it it's all depends. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also try to make things, there's two things in closing that you wanna do. You want to mitigate the risk, meaning you wanna make it as easy as possible for somebody to commit, okay? 
you want to make it is all we have to do is this. We can get started on the paperwork now. If they have to do a laundry list of things before they put the house on the market, one, there's a chance they get discouraged altogether. Two, yeah. somebody else comes in while they're trying to fix it up and do it and they offer them a lower commission or they offer them something else, some other shiny object and they yeah. take them, right? And now you lose the client altogether. So there's a, so I'm always trying to take the listing right when I go. Yeah. Um, I've also done it in a two part listing presentation that I've learned from another colleague as well, that if I don't get the chance to create enough rapport, say I get a referral from somebody and I have to show up and I've done no research, I'm still going to get in right away and I'm still going to show the property as soon as I get that call or I'm going to check the property out, I should say, yeah. and see it as soon as I can. Meet them face to face, make a good connection, start with that tap, right? Thank you for having me. You've got a beautiful home. Would you like me to take my shoes off, right? And I'll typically start with that. And for most people, they appreciate that. Whether they want you to or not, they yeah. just appreciate you asking. It's little things like that, that they're making up their mind in the first 30 seconds they meet you, whether there's already a connection or not, okay. whether they respect you as a professional or not. So after I do that, then when I come in, then typically I'll say, do you mind showing me around the property? Not everybody likes to do that. Some will even say they don't even want the seller to show them around. They want to view it for themselves, check it out, and see it without hearing from the seller. In my opinion, oh, yeah. that's where I'm doing all my discovery. So as I walk through the home, even before I'm sitting down and actually formally going through this map portion, right? I get what needs to happen in the presentation. It's, it changes with every single seller that I meet. Yeah. So as I'm speaking to them, I've had it happen where she was referred to me and then she tried to sell it on her own for a month and she wasn't successful with that. But in the time she was trying to sell it as a FISBO, she got hit on by every single agent. It was a local, local one too. She got hit on by everybody. And they would ask her, who's your agent? She'd say the name, and they're like, oh, that guy, psh, you know, work with me. You know what I mean? That guy's a joke, right? Um, but she was like, man, they said some crazy things. I was like, I'm sure yeah, they did, they, right? I'm sure, do, I'm sure they did. And I know, it's just- I always tell them like, I'm sure somebody's going to come again and tell you they can do it for cheaper. Right. But I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to hire me. And then they're like, I do. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, That's I'm going to tell you. You're going to, you're going to be very happy with me if you give me the opportunity, but I can guarantee you the next person you interview, they're going to cut their commission right away. Yeah. So you're already, yeah. you're future paced now. Yeah. You're setting the expectation. Yeah. I do That's the only similar. thing that they're going to beat me on, I tell them, is the commission. There right? you go. I'm telling you I'm worth 3%. There you go. Um, but they'll do it for 2.5, so I'll give you 5.5. Right. Like, okay. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah, it, but you learn that as you go into you the business, because I wasn't like that before. No. I wasn't the leader. I would be like, well, do you want to sign? Right. You know, you just learn those things. But You do, or never even ask. Yeah, you you're know, just you like, know. you're like, well, I hope they just say, can we start working together? It's serious. It's yeah. just like, depending on what your personality, you. yeah. you're waiting for them to say, okay, I like you, I want to hire you. Yeah. And if you didn't even ask the closing question, that may have been the test. You may have failed the test because you didn't have enough confidence to ask for the business, yeah. right? I failed a couple of times. I was like, oh, oh, it's, I didn't get we all that. have. And it's, you know, I was talking to another another agent here in uh, Cameron, a strong agent, and I was just sharing, I was like, man, I missed, I missed out on one in Moore Park, missed another one. I had missed two properties. I was like, it's been a while since I've missed, you know, one like that. I missed two. And she's like, I don't learn from the ones I get. I learn from the ones I don't get. Yeah that's when I go back and refine everything yeah. and it is you learn you don't learn when you get the business you think oh I'm, I'm hot stuff right it's all just clicking I got it all figured out yeah. you don't really work on yourself it's when you miss that listing that right. you should have got that you truly start digging deeper okay um, now that's all all great points thank you for bringing that up there was something else that you, you talked about that I wanted to dive in deeper so um, before I forget when we go through this and we're at a good place, what's the question? I know a few of you have heard this before. What do I typically do before we move to price and uh, commission? What do we want to do when we're at a good spot in the presentation? How do you feel about what I've shared with you? Yep. So it's called a temperature gauge question. Okay, I think of a thermometer, right? So temp gauge question. Okay. So 
what I'll do at that point is you can ask a question like that, especially if it's an amiable, somebody who's more on feeling based, expressives are more feeling based, right? So if they're more on the feeling side, you're going to say, how do you feel about what I've shared with you so far? That's the easiest. That's actually a soft close. How do you feel about with what I've shared with you so far? Typically by this point, they're usually going to say, you know what? This is fantastic. This is so much more than I was expecting. I had no idea there was this much involved in selling our property or selling a home, right? We have what we call the four pillars, and I'll get into that in just a second. Unless, uh, again, you're answering all our questions, unless you want to tell us all the, the pillars too, but I'm glad you're, um, you're picking it up. You're picking up what we're putting down here, right? Um, on the four pillars here. So on that temp gauge question, another way I can do it is I'll say on a scale of one to 10, 10 being 100% confident that I can sell your home, one being 10% confident, where are you at in terms of, where, where would you rate myself in terms of listing and selling your property? And what would you say, what number? I'd say a nine, just I don't wanna give a 10, cause you know, then you're, because you know what's in back of their head, what's the commission, do you exactly. know what I mean? Because we haven't got to We that. haven't talked about we that. We haven't, so. and that's perfect, yeah. okay? So you gave a nine, and that's a very common response. A very common response. Usually they don't want to offend you, say anything too <laughs> low, right? But no, a nine is a very common yeah. response. I'm trying to remember what you gave me when, when I asked you this question. <laughs> Did now, you ask me? Yeah, you know I asked you this. <laughs> I asked you something like this. What you start doing though is isolating the objection, but you're very good at not showing your cards. So you were, I don't know if you even gave me a number. I don't think you asked me number wise. I think I you did? just generically how, asked How do you that. feel? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember right after the first training I did, she's like, you've been using all this stuff on me. Yes. As we're going through this, I said, I'm like, you're using your discovery on me. That's what you're doing. I said, that's what it is. Yeah. And that's, that's what the art is in terms of what we're doing. You have to know what somebody wants. You got to know what they're trying to accomplish. You got to know what's getting in the way of them accomplishing that and how you, you are the guide. That's your job. You're the guide to help them accomplish their goals. Right. So it's the same thing I do as a manager and as a leader within the organization is I'm a guy and the Everest is a guy to help us as agents do more business to help serve other people. It's the same thing. It's all leadership development. So, um, so that question though, if you say a nine, I'll say nine, that's great. So you're 90% confident that I can sell your home. Well, I want you to be a hundred percent confident. So Laura, can you share with me? What is it? that is your hesitation with getting started today? Uh, I'm interviewing another agent, a couple more from different Great. areas. So um, I just want to see what they have to offer as well. Right. Now that's great. So you're, in, <laughs> you're interviewing a couple more agents. Well, this is a yes. very important decision. So I respect that you want to do your due diligence, right? Does this sound familiar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I respect that you want to do your due diligence. It doesn't mean it's not sincere, okay? And that's another point I gotta make about all of this. When you learn this and you understand this, the only way it works is if you believe in it. If you don't believe it's in the best interest of the other person, you can't sell it, okay? And that's critical to understand. But our job is to sell. Yeah. Our job is to be persuasive. It is human nature to procrastinate. It's human nature not to be decisive and to not make decisions. So that's exactly what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I just want to hear what other people have to offer, yeah. right? I got to talk to a couple other agents. You know, I hear you're always supposed to get three quotes, talk to three <laughs> people, right? So that's all I'm doing. You know, yeah. that's what how I've been taught. And you don't make them wrong. You never make them wrong. You always repeat and affirm. So uh, that's great. So you want to interview a couple other people. Uh, can I ask who those other people are that you plan to interview? Uh, one of them is a family friend, okay. and the other is somebody that drops off flyers at my doorstep. That's great. So, uh, somebody, <laughs> I have one like that right now. Right, actually, so like, somebody who's always dropping flyers off at your, your doorstep, so at least they're out there dropping paperwork off, They've right? sold a few in the area, so. Right, they sold a few in the area, yeah. so they must know the area. Uh, do you um, do you know the agent's name? And I'll ask. I'll ask who the Frank agent. Chen. Frank Chen. Frank Chen. Okay. I'm up against and Frank Chen. And, and which uh, and which company are they with? Uh, Remax One. Remax One. Okay, so you got a Remax One, and then I would. So I'm gonna know what companies they're with. I'm gonna know who the agent yeah. is, and so this could be a two-part presentation here. 
especially if I can't overcome this objection, yeah. okay? Yeah. So what I do in this situation though is I isolate the objection. So after I get the information I need, then I'm gonna say, so other than needing to interview these other two agents, right? And, I, and I'll, I can even start off with, I'm gonna apologize. Obviously, I haven't done a good job with my presentation to discover what you're looking for and to answer those questions, right? So what is it? What is your hesitation in working with me? Or I can even start with, what's your hesita hesitation in working with Century 21 Everest, yeah. right? Yeah. Start with the brokerage. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have any issue with C21? No. Okay, so you got no issue with C21, that's great. Do you have any, any issue with me and what I've shared with you so far? We just haven't just discussed what I'm gonna pay you for it and how that works, because I'm not familiar with that. Okay, yeah, you know, well that's- What do I pay? Well, that's great. Well, we're, we're definitely gonna get into that. So after you hear in terms of what the cost is and what the expense is in terms of working together, uh, other than that, is there anything else that you have hesitation or concern about? No. I okay. Really. So really it's just commission. And if that makes sense, then okay. you could be ready to get started. Sure. <laughs> okay. So now, so now it's, it's already shifting, right? Yeah. First it was yes. about the other agents shifting to the yes. So what I'm doing, it's called isolating the objection. Right. I want to eliminate all other excuses or reasons of why a seller is not going to work with me. This is when we get into the ultimate close. So if you see it on the master close, it says re repeat and affirm the objection. So we want to think about it. You want to think about it. That's great. Show empathy. This is a big decision. If I were you, I'd feel the same way too. Okay. So what you're saying is if I were you, I'd feel the same way too. Right. What was that? If this is Russ. I got to end this one to start the coaching call. Okay. Sorry. Not a problem, guys. And, uh, for everybody that's on, man, bro, we got we got like ten people on here, man. You, <laughs> we got to figure out another one. So we'll, yeah, it's okay. We'll wrap it up. Um, I have it on video for anybody else. I appreciate you guys all hopping on. Uh, so we'll do a part two to this. So next Monday, we'll wrap it up uh, and we'll do a second part to the presentation. Is this has this been helpful for everybody? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll continue it uh, next week. So next Monday, we'll continue it. And I'm going to keep recording on here, so I'll share that link. Okay? Thank you guys for hopping on. All right, guys. T talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Recording stuff. See, that's what stinks about using that same thing in Utah. Oh, okay. All right, we're still going up here. I'm over by, by, by Oak, so um, I'll be done in like one minutes. Do you want that to move has the house? It. I have my own too, but I only have so much storage okay. on my Zoom link, as when well as that I have to share it with everybody with that link on the email. Oh, There's one right now. That's like the master one. Right. But yeah, we or need one another one for California. You need to have a separate Utah account. Okay, all right. Well, Are you going to get something to eat? Miss Cordice goes, you not please. <laughs> I'm not okay. 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 Okay.